Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. BNB Recap RJ tells Luna he doesn't know if they have a future, and Lauren s shocked when Deacon asks about sugar. Thursday, April 18, 2024, today on Bold and the Beautiful, Zend urges RJ not to blame Luna, Steffi worries about Deacon spinning crackpot theories, and Eric tells Lauren that Deacon is grieving Sheila. Wednesday s early BNB recap, Poppy couldn't stop Luna from rushing to Forrester, while Deacon questioned Finn about sugar. Steffi and Finn kiss in the Forrester office. He explains that he already picked up takeout from Il Giardino for dinner. She guesses he ran into Deacon and he s not letting it go about Sheila. Steffi says he needs to stop spinning crackpot theories. The doctor thinks Deacon is getting more convinced. His wife knows this has been hard for him and she s trying to be understanding. He can appreciate that. Finn assures her she doesn't have to worry about him being distracted by this. Her happiness is his focus. They kiss and hug. He promises her a back rub tonight. Finn says that Deacon asked him how he feels about his birth mother being gone and he said it doesn't matter. It just has to be accepted. She can understand Deacon being skeptical about Sheila's demise given her history but she was there and lived it. There is no doubt in her mind that Sheila is gone. Lauren is at Eric S to check up on him. He is thrilled for the company and she is happy to see he is getting better. They have so much to celebrate now that Sheila is gone. She doesn't think Steffi should feel an ounce of guilt. Eric wonders how Finn is handling this. She is sure he is the only one mourning. He reminds her about Deacon. It's hard for her to wrap her head around someone falling for Sheila. He points out that he did. She says he was conned and just saw a pretty nurse. Deacon went into a relationship with a psycho consciously. She is sure he will realize he is lucky she died before she could ruin his life. They congratulate themselves on being the good guys and surviving Sheila. In the Forester design office, Zend and Poppy tell RJ that Luna is not to blame for anything. RJ doesn't want him telling how to feel after he intentionally stabbed him in the back. Zend repeats he didn't know she was high on drugs. RJ reminds him he still knew she was his cousin's girlfriend. Zend hopes he will forgive him because he can see it was a betrayal but Luna would never betray him. He urges him not to blow this. Luna urges them not to put pressure on him. Poppy repeats that this is all her fault. RJ agrees with her. He doesn't want to listen to them and kicks them out. As Poppy leads Zend out, he stops to apologize for rocking his world with this big misunderstanding and urges him not to break Luna's heart. Left alone, Luna asks RJ if he will ever be able to look at her the same. RJ knows who she is and that she didn't t knowingly cheat on him. But that doesn't t make it less shocking or hurt less. He doesn't t know where to go from here. He wishes she d told him, after it happened. So does she but she wanted to protect his relationship with Zend. He declares that s history. He only wants to talk about them. This would be easier if he didn't t love her so much. He s trying to make sense of this but needs time because when he looks at her, he sees her in Zend's arms. She understands and tells him she will always love him, no matter what he decides. When she touches him, he jumps away. At Il Giardino, Deacon stares at the joy search on the laptop. He tries searching for sugar but all he s getting is pictures of pastry. He keeps wondering how she suddenly had ten toes. He s not going to give up until he knows. After he signs for a delivery, Deacon returns to staring at Sheila on his computer. Lauren shows up and tells him to delete it. He s better off with no reminder of Sheila. Lauren thinks that s ridiculous. 
didn't he he got to the morgue she thinks he s clinging to false hope and tells him that he should be thankful he never saw the monster she was. If he even knew a fraction of the torment he caused her. As she walks out, he calls out, does the name Sugar mean anything to you? That stops her in her tracks. She walks back and he demands to know what she knows about Sugar. The sun painted the horizon with hues of pink and orange as Luna stepped onto the porch of the cozy bed and breakfast. A gentle breeze tousled her hair, carrying with it the scent of blooming flowers from the garden. She took a deep breath, trying to calm the turmoil in her heart. RJ stood by the railing, his silhouette etched against the fading light. Luna's steps faltered as she approached him, uncertainty gnawing at her insides. She had sensed something was amiss, the tension lingering between them like an unspoken question. Hey, Luna said softly, her voice barely a whisper against the backdrop of the evening. RJ turned to her, his eyes searching hers for something she couldn't quite decipher. Hey, he replied, his tone heavy with a weight she couldn't ignore. Luna's heart skipped a beat, anxiety coiling in the pit of her stomach. Is everything okay she asked, her voice trembling ever so slightly. RJ hesitated, his gaze drifting to the horizon as if searching for the right words. I don't know, he admitted finally, his voice laced with uncertainty. I've been thinking a lot lately, about us. Luna's breath caught in her throat, a sense of dread settling over her like a dark cloud. About us she echoed, her voice barely audible. RJ nodded, his expression pained. Yeah. About where we're headed, if we even have a future together. Luna felt as if the ground had been pulled out from beneath her feet, she had never imagined that their relationship could be in jeopardy, that the love she had thought was unshakable could be so fragile. What do you mean she asked, her voice trembling with emotion. RJ sighed, running a hand through his hair in frustration. I mean. I'm not sure if we want the same things anymore. If we're on the same page about our future. Luna's heart sank as the weight of his words settled over her. She had always believed that they were meant to be together, that their love could conquer any obstacle. But now, faced with the uncertainty of their future, she couldn't help but feel a sense of despair creeping in. I love you, Luna. RJ said softly, reaching out to take her hand in his. But love isn't always enough, is it? Tears welled up in Luna's eyes as she looked into his, seeing the pain and doubt reflected back at her. I don't know, she admitted, her voice barely a whisper. I just don't know anymore. As the last rays of sunlight faded from the sky, Luna and RJ stood on the porch of the bed and breakfast their future hanging in the balance. Meanwhile, in the quaint kitchen of the bed and breakfast, Lauren was busy preparing dinner for the guests, her mind buzzing with thoughts of the day ahead. She had always loved the hustle and bustle of running the B&B, the sense of purpose it gave her in the quiet town they called home. But her thoughts were soon interrupted by the sound of footsteps behind her, and she turned to see Deacon standing in the doorway a curious expression on his face. Hey, Lauren, Deacon said, his voice hesitant. Can I talk to you for a minute? Lauren raised an eyebrow, curiosity piqued by the unusual seriousness in Deacon's tone. Of course, she replied, setting down the knife she had been using to chop vegetables. What's on your mind? Deacon took a deep breath as if stealing himself for what he was about to say. I was just wondering, about sugar, he said finally, his words coming out in a rush. Lauren blinked in surprise, unsure of what he was getting at. Sugar she echoed, confusion evident in her voice. Deacon nodded, his expression earnest. Yet. Yeah. I noticed we're running low on sugar and I was wondering if we needed to pick some up from town tomorrow. Realization dawned on Lauren as she realized what Deacon was really asking. 
she couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all, the tension that had been building inside her dissipating in an instant. You scared me for a minute there, Deacon, Lauren said, shaking her head in amusement. I thought you were going to ask me something serious. Deacon grinned sheepishly, scratching the back of his head in embarrassment. Sorry about that. I guess I got caught up in the moment. As they shared a laugh, Lauren couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the man standing before her. In a world filled with uncertainty and doubt, Deacon had a way of bringing lightness and joy into her life, reminding her of what truly mattered. And as they stood in the warm glow of the kitchen, surrounded by the comforting aroma of home-cooked food, Lauren couldn't help but feel hopeful for the future that lay ahead. Whatever challenges may come their way, she knew that as long as they faced them together, they would always find a way to overcome.